Cobb TV. Watch your life make sense. I came to a point where uh, I started to take a look at the world and wanted to make a, a dramatic change. I've always been attracted to songs, art, any type of media that expressed this. And then, but I actually came to the point where I wanted to be uh, uh, similar to basically all the revolutionaries balled up into one. And one that really caught my eye was uh, a character named Malcolm X. During the 1960s in, uh, in America, he was very popular. He actually mentioned at one point that it wasn't a color thing, that it was actually uh, a human problem, which hit me. So I wanted to model him. I used to stay up to like five in the morning listening to his speeches, how he's expressed, and of course the whole general movement and all the different pieces and how they were expressing themselves. So, and I actually got to the point, and this is going to be my first question, is I got to the point where I was expressing to people that I was ready to actually, if it came to it, I would end my life just to succeed in achieving this goal. And my first question is, what makes a person for the whole of humanity, or even a, uh, a small portion, but actually the whole, to be willing to, no matter what happens, who comes to them, to just let go of themselves and, and just go for it? Well, I'm not sure I quite understood your question, but let's try to see what's happening in humanity. Racism is a natural thing. We hate anyone who is not like us. I want to see in other people something that exists in me, because what is in me, I love, and what is not in me, I don't love. And so I look at every single person and I see how much they are similar to me, how much, you know, they're good to me or I understand them or how close they are to me. Accordingly, I judge my love. And it exists in a law of creation. It's called the law of equivalence of form. And so there is no way to go around it. It's rooted in nature. I love what is similar to me. And that's it. At the human level, we can never traverse it, come out of it. We can only do that if we elevate ourselves above the level of our ego. When I love what's close to me in terms of, in terms of my opinions or understandings or habits or who I am. You know. So if we rise to a higher level and understand that everyone are as one human being, one soul, one body, interconnected, globalized, integrated, as we can now see in the world. So you see that gradually the time is coming after millennia of human evolution that we're beginning to see that we have no choice, we're equal, we're similar, we're connected. Even culture is becoming global. The same for education and language and internet and whatnot. And that's how we gradually advance, but it's a long way. But the wisdom of Kabbalah says that if we truly want to remove racism and bigotry, so everyone will be close to me, then I have to transcend my own nature, my ego. Only there will I find everyone as being parts of my own body, my own soul, only under that condition. But how can we rise above nature? Here comes a special method, which explains that it is possible, but you have to work on it. And we have an example from history. It, the same that's happening now happened about three and a half thousand years ago in ancient Babylon. Their people felt that they were connected, uh, hateful of each other, but also dependent on each other. And then one fellow rose, uh, one of the Babylonian priests by the name of Abraham. He was a very learned person. And he says, it's happening because we have to truly connect among us, so let's start connecting. But only a very small part of, of, of the Babylonian population heard him. 
and they kind of grouped themselves around him and they decided to start working on loving others and not uh, follow the ego. And that part, that group, which over time became the people of Israel, is the only group where there were no slaves. There were never slaves in it. A slave there was one who was kind of a, a you know, who was working for you with tenure, you know, like someone who's, who's an employee. But they never had slaves in the ordinary sense. They were always equal. There were never masters, lords, greater or smaller people. Everyone were equal. There were wealthier people or poorer people. But that's now not how a person was judged, but only by a person's virtues. That's how it was. But it was because they were using the principle of Abraham, who said, love thy friend as thyself, that this is the rule. And they were constantly trying to rise above their um, the ego. That was in the old days. <laughs> but the rest of the Babylonians, who didn't adopt the method of uniting as brothers, he wanted everyone to unite. They were scattered um, everywhere around the globe, and they began to struggle, and they created all kind of costs and classes in, in, within peoples. And some of the nation was therefore became servants to the other part, which was the Lord. And that's how it was in every nation, or one nation towards another nation. They were always at war, trying to dominate, you know, etc. So we can see from history that if we follow our egos, then you cannot get rid of the hatred of others, and others will always be someone who is not like me. If we want to achieve equality, it is only by rising above our nature. And the way to rise above our nature is the method of Kabbalah. And I hope that today we're at this special period in time where our lives are forcing us to c create that kind of connection. The world has become round, you know, global, integral, interdependent, um, and it's becoming more and more apparent that we're interdependent. So we're going to have to use the wisdom of Kabbalah to reach equality. But that's the only condition to reach equality. In other words, if you think that the world will be, people will be equal tomorrow without any bigotry, it's incorrect. There will not be bigotry only if we rise above nature. Okay, so here's my, my this kind of, you kind of shaped my first question. So my first question is, with these virtuous people that see this, you're saying without uh, a proper understanding or, or the nature of uh, or the, or their own nature or actually the nature of everyone, this global nature or this interconnection, that even if someone has this great desire and he's willing to die and, and do all the things that you spoke of as um, connect people, peace, erase all the racism, it won't work unless they understand the method of they, uh, this method that you've mentioned. We can accept the fact that everyone's equal, oh, judging by, you know, this, uh, the law in the state. We can come to a point where black, red, yellow, blue, whatever, everyone's equal. That there are those that have a kind of sexual uh, tendency that 50 years ago was unaccepted, like homosexuality, and today it is acceptable, or other things. So we can accept that. But I'm talking about an internal agreement by nature, where you start feeling people as close. I can treat people decently, you know, like everyone else. But that's a superficial attitude. It's a, it's a social norm inside in my nature, I remain separate from others, and then everyone who's not like me, I hate them to the extent that they're different from me. Hatred doesn't mean I have to say that I hate them. Hatred means I feel that he and I are two separate, remote entities.
So what does this cause then? This, this, if a, a person is so outwardly, um, so giving, and what, what does this cause that, that doesn't matter if they're outwardly giving, that it, what, what conditions or consequences does this cause within the world, even though they're expressing it outside, but it seems to be nothing but turmoil. Like this, I have one more question that I want to say before you answer it, Dr. Lightman, is that in, this, in, the, in these mass different time periods, there were many people that, that, that ran and, and actually gathered a lot of people and they wanted to make this specific change. They even had movements and the music and everything art-wise or anything going on in the world expressed the same thing. But what, 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 why wouldn't it work then as the way you say it, it should work now? Why didn't it work then? Well, first, it didn't work because people didn't place before them a goal of transcending their egos. It wasn't clear to them that this is the goal. And today, it is beginning to work because we have no choice. If we feel that we are connected and interdependent and at the same time are hateful of each other, then we have to do something about it. On one hand, we're interdependent. On the other hand, we have to be afraid of other people. So what's going to happen? So we have to kind of resolve that state into some direction, either go to general destruction or general bonding. Either one. But, but there cannot be, we can't stay where we are and continue that way. So I'm really hopeful that in the near future we'll see people tending to unite, to bond, because they, for lack of choice. And then it'll come in the right way where we have to transcend our nature, not towards some social um, norm or uh, code, but we have to reach something where we will feel interdependent in a good way.